All right, we'll get started here. I know it's probably a couple minutes early, but that's all right. Full house, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the last of our seminars that we'll be doing here at uh, Grimsby Tackle for this, I guess, off season, if you want to call it that. Um, and then we'll get started again next fall. Uh, tonight's topic is salmon fishing in Lake Ontario. And uh, I'd like to uh, introduce our guest today. Um, Daryl and I have been great friends for, I don't know, 25 years? Yeah. Something like that. And uh, I got a, a, an interesting setting here to kind of put this in perspective. Uh, when I first met Daryl, uh, we were both, you know, fishing tournaments, uh, the, the salmon tournaments in particular, King of the Lake and, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, and I remember one of the tournaments, it was blowing out of the east and it was, it was uh, canceled for the first day. And then on the se second day, on the Sunday, uh, they were uh, they were talking about whether we should cancel it all together. Well, they called a bunch of bunch of us uh, captains together to make this decision, and they called both Daryl and I. And the reason for it is because we had the smallest boats in the tournament field, 17 foot uh, Mr. Pike Lunds, and uh, yeah, they wanted to make sure it was okay for us too. <laughs> We, we were dumb back then, though. Yeah, we said, let's, go. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, uh, Daryl has been uh, involved with uh, the salmon fishing on Lake Ontario for a long time. Uh, been members of some of the, uh, probably the best tournament teams on Lake Ontario, the Silver Junkies. It's, uh, it was a team that was led by Pat Cumberford back in the day, late Pat Cumberford one of the best anglers, especially in the western end of Lake Ontario, very, very well known for the Niagara Bar and salmon fishing. And uh, so Daryl was uh, uh, part of that team along with Nate Jamison and uh, Steve Jablonski was in that team there for a little bit as well. And now Steve uh, owns Pat's boat, so uh, it stays, uh, stays within the group, so it's good. Uh, they've won many tournaments. Uh, one particularly was the Spring King of the Lake, and uh, one just in front of Grinsby. I'll yeah. let you tell the story later, but sure. uh, but nonetheless, uh, you're in good hands with some great information that's going to come from Daryl, uh, as well as myself. I'm Shane Toms, uh, owner and operator of Fantastic Sport Fishing, and uh, also fishing primarily Lake Ontario, but also do a little bit on Lake Erie, as you know, for walleye. Pa uh, bass perch and and uh, steelhead as well so um, yeah let's dive right into it um, yeah all right uh, just by a show of hands how many folks have uh, just getting started into salmon fishing Lake Ontario maybe the first couple of years wow that's that's significant that's half the room and that's really what we want to do is kind of build a foundation with our information tonight and then maybe extrapolate and get a little bit further into some details as well so that it appeases all folks in the room. Um, Daryl is certainly with that tournament mind and some abilities that, uh, and experiences that will bring you know, some good information, I think. And what I'm gonna try to do is maybe develop some of that foundational information first. Uh, to start, well, let's talk about the salmon themselves, the species of fish that we're after and what we're talking about tonight. There's really two different species that I'm going to focus on, Chinook salmon and Coho salmon. And uh, there are some distinct differences between the two. Uh, Biology-wise, Chinook salmon, for an example, um, they tend to be uh, a little bit longer in time out in the lake so they grow a little bit larger okay uh, so when you talk about a 30 pound chinook salmon uh, it's maybe more common than let's say a 30 pound coho salmon and the reason for it is the length of time that they're out in the lake uh, the reason that they're a shorter time for coho is that when they're stocked it's usually already been upwards to about 18 months since they've hatched 
before they get uh, released into the lake. So there have been a year and a half of in, in the hatchery and not growing all that much. They've not been eating bait fish, for an example, in their young, young time, um, in their life cycle. But Chinook salmon, they are hatched during the winter in the hatcheries and stocked in the spring. So they have typically as much as three, potentially four, maybe even five years out in Lake Ontario. And uh, you can only imagine that the longer the period of time that they're out in the lake, the more growth that they get. Uh, so nowadays, you know, typically when we're hearing about a 30 pound Chinook salmon, it's often because they've taken an extra year out in the lake. They're typically those three plus years, potentially four years, uh, four years old. When we talk about a 40 pounder, it's again, another victory lap out there in the lake and growing that much bigger. So they have some more time to build up and eat more and gain more weight. Coho salmon, they are fast eaters, but they've only been in the lake for a, a, a year and a half before they're ready to go up and spawn. As you know, both coho and Chinook salmon, when they go in to spawn, they die. That's the end of their life cycle. <laughs> so uh, that's basically the kind of fish that we're looking at. Um, their behaviors are a little bit different as well in the way that they feed and the way that they really kind of uh, things that you want to keep in, keep in mind as well. So for an example, Chinook salmon tend to want to use the whole water column from surface down to the bottom. And they'll be uh, in deep water or in shallow water. They're very, very pelagic. They, they move quite a bit. Uh, coho salmon, they tend to focus a lot more on the upper stretch of the water column. Top 25 feet, for an example, uh, or where the thermocline is in the middle of the summer. Uh, they'll hone in on those areas. Yes, they may foray into deeper water at times, but for the most part, they're very ferocious feeders. Uh, they love to be in and around bait fish, and, uh, and they focus their attention on that uh, upper stretch of the water column, if you will. They are aggressive, as I said, like a type A personality. They come in dashing into bait. They come in crashing into your bait, uh, your, your lures. Uh, they attack, they fight really hard when they first hit. Uh, very aggressive. Chinook salmon, they could be temperamental. Go in on a bite or kind of soften out on a bite. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, we just got a bunch of baits that we pulled out here. Um, yeah, like this is a thin fin, excellent bait. Uh, you can run these uh, up high on, let's say, a short lead core line. We'll talk a little bit about uh, rods and reels in a sec, but uh, you can also get into little flashers like this. Uh, little six inch spin doctors. Reds are often the bright color, chartreuse, reds, gets their attention. Uh, brings them in to see what's going on with these small little flies, okay? Um, these, uh, these smaller size fly actually imitates or is best to um, match the hatch, if you will, on uh, the size of the bait fish that they're feeding. So a small L white, maybe some smelts in the spring. Uh, that's what they're after, those, those cohos. So we try to match the hatch with these uh, size flies. Yeah. 